You may have heard somewhere that having a conversation with ChatGPT is like pouring out a bottle of water. If you think about the millions of queries ChatGPT gets on any given day, that's a whole lot of water. There's some people who believe that this is, you know, you're pouring out a bottle of water every time you ask ChatGPT a question or something like that. So you, can you like settle this for us? How bad is ChatGPT for the environment? I don't know. Um, very much not an expert on this field. Turns out that number comes from a single study from UC Riverside researchers. They found data centers consume a lot of water. I was quite shocked when I saw the number of uh, AI computing's uh, water needs. Xiaolei Ren's been studying data center efficiency for over a decade. His research team found that every 10 to 50 ChatGPT prompts can burn through what you'd find in a standard 16 ounce water bottle. But what's crazier is that's only a small part of the water used for building and operating AI. When we talk about data center water use, we're generally talking about the water pumped through to cool the massive servers at the data centers. This water is taken from the water supply because it has to be clean fresh water to avoid clogs or bacteria growth. Where does the water go? Well, a pretty good portion of it, most of it, is evaporated. Evaporation is what that water bottle analogy is about. It's how data centers consume water. For example, in 2023, Microsoft's entire operations, including all data centers, consumed enough water to fill 15.6 billion water bottles. That's according to their own environmental report. But that's not all. Data centers use a lot more water that gets put back into the water supply and sent to a water treatment plant. Even though that water is being reused, the data centers are still hoarding supply, even if it's only short-term hoarding. And that's a big issue in water-poor regions, an expanding portion of the globe facing droughts and water scarcity. It's that water use, however, that is raising eyebrows, especially in a place not known for its water supply, the Arizona desert. For example, last year, Microsoft reported using, or withdrawing, 65% more water than it technically consumed. It withdrew enough water from the water supply to fill almost 26 billion bottles of water. So that means the bottle of water we poured out at the beginning should actually be more like a bottle and a half. You might be wondering, can't they just put data centers in places that get plenty of rain? That's harder than it sounds. Big tech companies are trying to reduce their water usage, and they have had success making data centers more water efficient. Realizing the risk in New Mexico, Meta ran a pilot program on its Las Lunas data center to reduce relative humidity from 20% to 13%, lowering water consumption. It has since implemented this in all of its centers. But Meta's overall water consumption is still rising steadily, with about one-fifth of that water last year coming from areas deemed to have water stress. The problem? They're also building a lot more data centers. So while each data center may be more efficient with its water use, companies like Microsoft and Google are still using a lot more water overall. Microsoft's water use went up 34% in 2022, Google's 22%. And they only started reporting water usage recently. Google only started in 2019, Apple in 2021, and Amazon doesn't report it at all. So instead of promising to use less water, they promised to offset their water usage by replenishing water elsewhere, like restoring wetlands and other watersheds. Microsoft, for example, has set the goal of being water positive by 2030, or replenishing more water than it uses. Google has a similar goal. But restoring wetlands, for example, while a great thing to do, doesn't necessarily cancel out the water companies are using far away in a completely different ecosystem. But here's another problem. These tech companies have also promised to switch to green energy. In many cases, it's hard to save water when you're trying to pivot to green energy. Here's the issue. When building solar farms, the adage is to follow the sun. But places with ample solar power also tend to be places that are hot and dry. So there's not a ton of water there. And the hot climate means more water has to be used to cool the servers. 
Another major source of green energy is hydroelectricity, which is also great for data centers because the electricity is not only clean, but cheap. But hydro uses a lot more water than other forms of electricity. If you've ever seen a photo or video of water going through a dam, you've seen it fall at the bottom and create a big mist cloud. This is water evaporating. The more electricity hydro plants need to generate, the more water goes through the turbines, falls out the bottom, and evaporates. And now, many hydropower plants around the world are experiencing water shortages due to heat waves and droughts, reducing the amount of power they can generate. Hydroelectric dams provide more than 80% of Zambia's power, but they have dried up. It declared a national emergency back in February. And after months of blackout, the government has recently only been able to guarantee about three hours of power a day in parts of the country. As a result, there are very few places in the world where electricity is clean and water usage can be low. Ireland is one thanks to its abundant wind power. Ireland is in the top five countries globally for the amount of wind capacity installed per capita and for the contribution of that wind energy to final electricity demand. But it's already overloaded with data centers and there is a moratorium on building new ones. Microsoft is leading the way with the cloud. So what's the takeaway? Data centers are resource intensive. They use a ton of power and they drink a lot of water. There's no two ways about it. But tech companies want us to believe they can run it all on perfectly clean energy and not use too much water. That was an ambitious goal even before the AI boom. Now, tech companies want to build so many new data centers, they don't even know where to put them all. So next time you have a conversation with a chatbot programmed to sound like a movie star, Hello there! You can think not only about the bottle of water that's evaporating into the air, but all the climate promises that are now in jeopardy.